this time. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. everybody. Hallelujah. I want to praise the Lord, everybody. Just put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. If you Hallelujah. love God, if you're not ashamed of it, just put your hands together for him. He's worthy to be praised. We just want to thank the Lord is good tonight and his mercy endure forever. Hallelujah. If you know he's good, just put your hands together for Jesus. Just like this. Yeah. 
Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. So good, so good, so good. You are the same. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good.
victory belongs to him. Belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs, victory belongs to him. And victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to you, Jesus. The victory belongs to him. Say victory belongs. Victory belongs to you. How many believe there is victory in Jesus? Amen. It's prayer time. Every evening we have a power prayer session. And tonight we're going to pray way, way outside of ourselves. I'm not sure if you have your spiritual sensors up. But literally while we're worshiping, while we're continuing to do the things that we do, going to work and, 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 and take care of family and chopping coupons, our nation is beginning to change. Yesterday, bombs were sent to offices and homes all over this country from one folk from one political party. That's the kind of stuff we used to hear in third world countries. Not the United States of America. I'm not sure if we're really aware of it, but time is getting short, folks. The Bible says that he that shall come will come and will not tarry. And so tonight, 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 we are praying for our nation. We're praying for our leaders. I need you to think about the leaders or the leadership or the things in that realm that scare you the most. 
And that's where I need you to start your prayer. If you're scared of the liberal agenda and the thing that's going on to our culture, I need you to start your prayer there. If you're scared about what's happening in the state house or the White House, I, I need you to start your prayer there. God has told us that we should lift up and pray for our leaders. We're going to do that on tonight. And then before your prayer is over, make sure that you pray for your neighbor. <laughs> make sure you pray for that person that's closest to you. I'm going to take a short journey, and you can if you want to, from my, from my feet to my knees as we talk to the Lord. Take the jazz a little bit. Heavenly Father, God, we are your children. God, we're watching the things that are happening around us, things that are happening in the culture, God, that we thought we've never seen before, things that are happening in the political realm, God. And it almost seems, Lord God, that, that everything is simply going crazy. You told us in, in the last book of the Bible that the, that the winds of strife would be held back just as long as, as all of your servants are sealed and then the angels will let the winds go. Lord, we, we aren't at that time yet, God, but we, we're, we're beginning to feel a pickup in the winds. Which lets us know, God, that time is shorter maybe even than we had believed. But our responsibility for those things that we cannot control is to bring them to the throne of grace. So, God, we lift up our leaders. We lift up our president. We lift up our congressmen, our senators. We, we lift up those who, 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 who have swayed, Lord God. And Lord, we're simply asking, Lord, that you don't allow them to do anything beyond your perfect will. But we do ask God that you cause them to remember those who are less fortunate. <laughs> cause them, God, to remember of the least of the least, God. For Lord, in many of your judgments and your word of God, Lord, your condemnation was most on how we treated the least of these. God, we pray for our city leaders, God, that you would guide them, God. We pray for resources, Lord God, in our city, God. We, we, we pray for our children. We pray for our schools, God. Lord, there was a time when, when prayers would be rattled off in our schools, Lord, and now more often than not, it's gunshots, God. So, Lord, we pray for our teachers. We pray for our students, God. We just lift them up. And we still acknowledge that the earth is the Lord's <laughs> and the fullness thereof, the worlds and they that dwell therein. So, God, continue to have your way. And God, before we end this prayer tonight, we just want to lift up our neighbor, that person that's to the right or to the left. God, we don't know what concerns, what burden they may have brought tonight. But Lord God, we ask that you bless them. We ask that whatever they came into the house of God looking for, God, that you would, would, would deliver it, God, in an epic way. We ask, Lord God, that every heart, Lord God, be even more tuned to you for having spent a Thursday evening in your house. And we'll give care to give you praise and honor and glory. For we ask it all in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let everybody say amen and amen.
is coming from you and your peace you give me in time of the storm Lord you And I live my hands in total praise to you. Anybody came to worship God today? Come on, say, Lord, I will live. Father God, we thank you that you saved us. God, sometimes we get so busy that the power of that act is lost on us. But God, we ask that you would gather our minds to you tonight as we search your word in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus. Let everybody say amen and amen. Tonight's message, tonight's message is entitled, It's Not Just Them, This Is Us. It's not just them, this is us. We began on Sunday night as we saw the Midianites overrunning the promised land. We saw the children of Israel uh, they should have been happy in their God-given homes, and yet they were in caves and hiding. And we found in the Word of God that, that the Bible says that the previous generation, that they knew and understood and saw the victories of God, but the Word said, but there came a generation who knew not the Lord and who did not remember all of his victories. 
Sometimes in the word of God, we can look at these stories and we can say, yeah, 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 look at them, they're terrible. But tonight, we're going to find in the word of God that it's not just them, <laughs> that it is us. Amen. Let me switch very quickly. Testing one, two. All right, make sure we're up in mix seven and eight as well. If you can, very quickly, uh, stand with me as we read tonight's scripture. We're in Judges, the sixth chapter, and we're in verses one through 11. One through 11, one through 11. Uh, read it with me. It says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel were made them dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel saw them, that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east even they came up against them, and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no substance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. And they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. And both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord of Israel, I brought you up out of Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, out of the hand of all that oppressed you, and drave them out before you and gave you this land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the God of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but ye obeyed not my voice. Verse 11, And there came an angel of the Lord, and sat under an oak tree, which was in Oprah, that pertaineth unto Joash the Abazarite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. You may be seated. God had given them the promised land. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God had blessed them with all kinds of stuff. But the Bible says that somehow things happen such that whenever Israel sowed into the land that the Midianites would harvest, huh? Whenever Israel would drop some watermelon seeds into the dirt, <laughs> that the Midianites and the Amorites' mouths would begin to water, huh? That, 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 that when the Israelite women began to cook some bread, that the Midianites began to rub their belly, huh? And the Bible says that this enemy simply came in and all they did was destroy. The promised land. I don't know about you, but I asked the question, how y'all messed that up, huh? God said, I drove, I gave you this land and somehow y'all messed that up. Y'all ever seen folk and, and somehow they had the ability to mess up even the greatest thing? Wow. Uh, one day I was just clicking. You know, every now and then we get that remote and we just, 
we just don't want to move. We get inertia and we just start clicking. And, and I clicked on this program and they were talking about the lottery winners. And they would talk about how they would win the lottery and they got all of this money and everything. And, and then all of a sudden, the, the family members are shooting each other, killing each other. And, and a few year, years later, um, the person who had won this big lottery is now broke. And if you're like me, I'm sitting there scratching my head like, you won $500 million. How you messed that up, huh? Israel has messed up a good thing. God says, in fact, notice that, that when they cried unto the Lord, the Lord did not first didn't send a deliverer. The Lord first sent a prophet. And the prophet basically said, how y'all messed this up, huh? I took you out of Egypt. I took you out of bondage. I brought you to this fruitful land, gave it to you on a platter, and somehow y'all have messed it. Messed it up. We can, we can sit on our high horses and, and say, man, they was a mess. <laughs> but the title of the sermon is, it's not just them. <laughs> it's not just them, it's us. We talked about on Sunday night how another generation came up and who knew not the Lord. And, and we talked about the perils of this generation. And there are some great perils in this generation who knew not the Lord. But it's not this, just this generation. <laughs> it's us. <laughs> it's not just the children of Israel. It's not just this generation. This is us. Watch this. There are some striking parallels between the children of Israel's promised land story and the fall of man's Garden of Eden story. You see, the reason I can say this is us is because there was a point at the beginning of all of our history when God did the very same thing for us. That, that he prepared this beautiful earth and he gave it to us and somehow we messed it up. And the reason I say we messed it up is because in the Hebrew, Adam's name means mankind. And so when the Bible teaches that Adam messed up, what the Bible is essentially saying is all of us somehow messed it up. This is us, y'all. Notice, 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 notice. Notice, God said, I brought Israel up out of the land of Egypt, and God brought man out of the dirt. Huh? Huh? I'm talking about parallels. God said, I gave you a promised land, and God gave us Eden. Huh? God says, an enemy occupied, occupies your territory, and, and way back then, an enemy slipped in who was called the Satan, and he occupied um, their territory. He was there. Um, they sinned by following um, um, the enemy Israel did, but we sinned by following the serpent. This is us, y'all, huh? huh? Somehow they messed up a good thing, and, and the reality is that we messed up a good thing. Notice, notice, notice. They cried, no, they cried unto God, and God sent them a what? A prophet, and then in verse 11, we saw that God sent them a deliverer. But notice us. Huh? But we ran and hid. <laughs> and God came searching for us anyway. And God promised us a, sa a sacrifice, and then he promised a savior. This is us. We are no better than Israel. In fact, we are worse. Because at least Israel cried unto God. Genesis tells us that when we messed up, that Adam and Eve simply ran. Didn't even call on a savior. The Bible says that the wages of sin is what? Death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The story of Gideon is a story about how God sent a deliverer. But the story of mankind is about the deliverer that God sent for all of us. 
Here's the reason I keep saying us. Again, the word, the name Adam means mankind. And the reality is, is that one of the concepts that the Bible teaches is that and the reason it called Adam, Adama, or mankind is because when God created Adam, God created all of humanity in one man. Watch this. And it is simply a truth that all of us simply came out of Adam at different times. The first person that came out of Adam was Eve, and the Bible says that God pulled her out of his side, huh? And then future generations came out. And so we were all in Adam, which means that when Adam messed up, we all messed up. <laughs> the question for today is, but what did our champion do? And for whom did he do it? Tonight's message is one of the most important because we're going to talk about all different kinds of things. You're going to learn some amazing things. But if you don't grasp what they sang about tonight, which is the victory that is in Christ Jesus, and, and accept that victory as your own, nothing else I say in this series will have a whole lot of meaning. So what did our champion, what did our, our champion Jesus do for us, and for whom did he do it? Notice what the book of Romans says. I love the message of the gospel. It blows my mind when I think about what God has done for all of us. Notice what the Bible says. In Romans chapter 5, verse 6, the Bible says, For when we were yet what? For when we were yet without strength. That means like the old folks would say, we couldn't even do nothing for ourselves. When we were yet without strength, the Bible says Christ died for who? The Bible says Christ died for the church members. <laughs> Christ died for the Christians. Christ died for the, for the, for the mother's board. <laughs> the Bible says Christ died for the ungodly. I don't need you to push up, put your hand up. Is, is there any ungodly folk up in here? <laughs> for scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Yet, for adventure, the Bible says, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were sinners. Don't ever allow the devil to tell you that God don't love you. The Bible says that while we were sinners... In fact, if we're truthful, we can still claim that title, huh? In other words, Christ stepped in as our hero, not when we were at our best, but when we were at our worst. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Here's another. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. The Bible says, when Adam sinned, sin entered into where? Into the world. And Adam's sin brought death so that death spread to who? Yeah. To everyone for everyone's sin. Because all of humanity was in Adam, when Adam sinned, that taint spread to everybody. But just in case you want to say you're innocent, notice what the last three verses of the text said. Then everybody sinned. <laughs> That disease spread to all of us, and we followed after and did the same thing that Adam did. When the head fell, all of humanity fell with that head. It's the truth anyhow. But notice, notice what the next verse says. It says, but there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought what? Death to many, but even greater is God's wonderful gift of grace and his gift of forgiveness uh, to many through this man, Jesus Christ. I need you to see and understand because we like to talk about Adam. We like to lament what he did and what Eve did. But the Bible says that whatever you think about what Adam did, that what Jesus did uh, 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 to push back on that was greater than what even Adam did. 
In other words, all of the bad that Adam did, that the good that Christ did to undo that was even greater. Amen. First Corinthians 15. Oh, I love this text. For in Adam, for in Adam, just the gang members die. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Am I reading the text right? For in Adam, just the Republicans die. <laughs> for in Adam, just the Democrats die. <laughs> uh, uh, for in Adam, all die. Notice what the end of the verse says, though. So also in Christ shall some of y'all. The text says, so in Christ shall all be made alive. What the Bible is telling you is whatever Adam did to mess us up, our hero, Jesus, did the reverse of that to undo it. And the reason this is so important is because there are people walking around after they have done something horrible and the enemy tells them God can't possibly love you anymore. The Bible says whatever Adam did to mess us up, Christ stepped in to undo that. For in Adam all die and in Christ all shall be made alive. Look at this. Oh man. Oh, you got to receive this. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45, the Bible says, thus it is written, the first man, Adam, the who? That's the one who was back in the garden. That's the one who messed it up. For in the first man, Adam, became a living being. But the last Adam became a living spirit. I need you to notice the language here. We know who the first Adam is. That's the one who was back in the garden. But the Bible in this text calls Jesus the last Adam. Let me tell you why it does that. Because when you search especially in the New Testament, you will see a phrase that gets used over and over and over again. And many of us have just simply bypassed that verse. And that phrase is in Christ. In Christ, in Christ. The reason that phrase is so important is because the Bible calls Jesus the last Adam. In other words, the concept is because all of us were in the Adam in the garden, when he messed up, we all messed up. But the Bible sent a man named Jesus, and the Bible calls him the last Adam. And what he did is he took all of humanity and put us in himself such that the failure that the first Adam did when he put us in himself, the victory that the last Adam did, I shared in it. I wasn't there when the first Adam messed up, nor was I there when the last Adam messed up, but uh, when the last Adam had victory. But, but just like he messed up and I shared the consequences, the Bible says when the last Adam had victory, I share in that victory. That's why Paul can use language like this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings with heaven, in heavenly places. How? In Christ, oh, that's Adamic language there, folks. According as he has chosen us where? In him. When? Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. What the Bible teaches that Christ put all of humanity in himself. And when he was victorious, we were victorious. When he conquered condemnation, we conquered condemnation. Oh, I love the way Isaiah said it. He says, for he was wounded. <laughs> put your name in there for my transgressions. He was crushed for my iniquities. 
upon him the chastisement of our peace and with his stripes. I'm healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Look at this. All of us messed up. And the end of the verse says, And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Repeat this verse with me. So that's why the Bible says, For God, <laughs> it don't say for so love the holy. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Y'all need to start reading verse 17 because it's powerful. We skipped that verse. Read verse 17 with me. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is us, y'all. We messed this thing up, but the Bible says that God sent a Savior, Christ Jesus, to step in where we failed. Now, let me tell you what this means in Gideon language before we end. In theology, there are, there are two phases of salvation. One is justification. Somebody say justification. Justification means God declares you holy. God says, I know what's on your record. <laughs> God says, I know what's on your rap sheet. <laughs> but I declare you holy. That's justification. And when Christ died, Christ justified all of us. God says, I no longer see you as, uh, as unrighteous. I see you as holy. That's what he did for us. He gave us a new territory, a brand new promised land. Watch this. Oh, I need you to see this thing. But when Israel got to the promised land, although he had redeemed them, there were some enemies in the territory. That part is called sanctification. In other words, even though Christ forgives you, even though Christ has given you a clean slate, you still got some lying in you. You still got some cheating in you. You still got some whoremongering and some lusting in you. And the problem is, God is trying to take some of us to heaven. And he says, before I can take you to heaven, I've already forgiven you, but I've got to clean you up with just a little bit. We've got to conquer a few of those enemies that are in the territory that you're still roaming around with. That's called sanctification. And just like he gave them the, the promised land justification, but he also said, you got to whoop up on some of these enemies that are still there. Sanctification. That's how I can plainly declare that I am forgiven, but God is still doing a work in me. Last verse. So the Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in the series, but I need to tell you that in the, in the Greek, this word for forgive is a word that means send away. This text doesn't mean that, 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 that every time I sin, I, I've got to, to, to necessarily remember that thing and ask him because he's already paid for it at the cross. This one says, I recognize that there are some still demons in your life. And if you can say, God, I'm still struggling with lying or cheating or lusting. God says, if you can do like they do in AA and say, hey, my name is Jack and I'm an alcoholic. If you can confess that thing, God says, I will send that sin away and I will fight the demons in your life and I will cleanse you. That's the car purging of the territory. God says, I will clean up the territory in your life. I've already forgiven you, but you can't come up in my house with the same tendencies that you have now. There is some territory that has to be conquered. 
And so if you will admit that God, there's still some Midianites in my life. If you will admit that there's still some Amorites in my life. God says, I've already given you the land, but, but if you will just admit it, I'll send a Gideon in your experience. And, and we'll begin to fight the enemy together. And not only will you have the, the land, not only will you own the territory, but you'll also be able to enjoy and possess the territory. This is us, y'all. And this is the victory that is in Jesus. Justification. Jesus' sacrifice is the promised land. It is forgiven, and he has given it to all of humanity. But there's some unconquered territory in our lives. There's some overcoming that needs to take place. And what God is saying in this story is, if you will simply obey me and allow me to work with you, we can gain victory in every aspect of your lives. I want to close with this story. The story is told about a family. And this family was trying to immigrate to America. I know this is not a politically correct story no more, but, <laughs> but this family is trying to integrate to America. And they sold everything that they had to buy the, the, the ticket on the ship to immigrate to America. And after they sold everything to buy their ticket, they only had enough money and enough food to pack a little lunch. They had some crackers and some peanut butter and a little bottle of juice, a few nuts and a few grapes and a couple of oranges. And it was a long journey and they, they went through that stuff fairly quickly. And so they were on the boat, headed to the promised land, but they were struggling. They were starving. They were hurting real bad. Everybody else on the boat was enjoying themselves, but they was hungry, y'all. And they were watching everyone else enjoy the trip all the while. They knew they were going to the promised land and they were excited about that. They knew they were going to America, they were excited, but they were struggling because they were starving on the journey. They were trying to conquer the demon of hunger and thirst. And one day, the little girl in the family came back to the room with a big smile on her face. She was all happy and, and her belly was poked out like pastors. And she was smiling and, and so she had some crumbs on her mouth and, and, and her mother said, where have you been and what have you done? And she said, mama, I just came back from eating and her mother began to rebuke her. Why have you stolen this food? What do you mean you came through eating? And she said something profound. She said, Mama, the food comes with the ticket. <laughs> Mama, the food comes with the ticket. Mama, the food is already paid for. They were on the ship struggling, not realizing that all of it had already been provided. And the truth of the matter is, even though many of us have victory that was obtained by Jesus, many of us are struggling, not realizing that not only has your debt been paid, but that every foe and every enemy in your life, that God has a warrior standing ready to fight your battle because it comes with the ticket. It comes with the ticket.